Because the machines are identical except for how the crimping force is applied, manual versus pneumatic, the 1765A pneumatic tool is featured here. When using the 5111A crimper, Dixon recommends that it be mounted on a table leg or wall at waist height for maximum leverage. Prepare the hose using procedure 1100, general preparation instructions. Measure the hose outside diameter with a diameter tape. For proper ferrule and die selection, please refer to procedure 1103. Set up the 5111A slash 1765A crimping machine. Remove the die cover plate from the machine. Insert the die segments into the die holder slots. Ribbed dies, when used with some ferrules, may crimp with one rib on the end of the ferrule. This will result in an unacceptable appearance. If this happens, turn all die segments so the numbers are facing in. Whether using ribbed or plain dies, the numbers on the dies must all be facing the same direction, as shown here. Replace the die cover plate. Do not over tighten the wing nuts as this may cause the die holders to bind. Slide the ferrule over the hose. Apply Dixon coupling lube to the fitting shank and insert the shank into the hose. Slide the fitting through the opening and position it so the die close just behind the hex on the fitting. Crimp the ferrule making sure the tool completes its open closed open cycle in one stroke. Remove the assembly from the tool and inspect the crimp. For large quantity assemblies, the 1765A crimper has a fitting stop. Position the fitting as before. Swing the stop up so that it touches the end of the fitting, then tighten the set screw. With the stop in place, insert the fitting through the machine until it touches the stop. Activate the machine and remove the fitting after the ferrule has been crimped. Inspect the assembly. Use of rib dies or plain dies is a matter of preference. Test the assembly using Procedure 4000, General Hydrostatic Testing Information, and Procedure 4001, Hydrostatic Testing. Dixon, the right connection.